Yep, it's gonna happen. Well, hey guys, we got two more things to buy. One is the paint, and two is the air compressor. We have to have an air compressor to shoot the paint on the car. So the question is, which air compressor do I buy to be in a car? Got this guy, it's kind of cute. Fills a flat tire in one minute, 20 seconds. A cordless air compressor? How cool is that? Kind of looks like an egg with a little hat on top. I've had a couple Husky things and I've liked them. We're looking at 90 PSI, 3.7 CFM. This one, no. Two tanks, that's impressive. The wheeled machine would be pretty handy, wouldn't it? Dual tank system by Rigid. Notice, 6.5 CFM, not 5.1 SCFM. Tricky, tricky. Here comes the fun. Figured you guys might want to know this. When strapping down your compressor, if you don't have a handle to strap to, I think just running the strap through the mount for the motor and the compressor, if you think that's a good idea, you may want to think again. I just learned something new. This compressor is really hungry. Let me tell you, on the way home, it started eating my straps. I got really hungry. I almost ate the whole strap. Volkswagen's are an oxymoron. They're the most reliable car you've ever had, yet they need the most work. But to that end, Check this out. Yeah, baby, running now. This is every man's dream, let me tell you. So we need two parts to be able to get this thing to fire off. First is going to be the power, obviously. We need to have power. The second is going to be the air compressor line, which is sitting over here. So let's dig into actually hooking this thing up and figuring out how to get it going. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is access the power. And so the power to, from the electric motor runs into this device here. So let's pull this cover off first. If you notice, there's no way to make any adjustments to the pressure of this tank. Now I can't recommend that you do this because there's safety protocols and all these things. But check this out. You take off the cover, and this is where I'm going to wire the 240 into the actual unit. Now, this is key. There is this little device here. <laughs> this is the actual pressure regulator. Now there's no knob on the top. You could just as easily poke a hole in the top of this guy and put a actual knob to be able to adjust the pressure, but they've prevented you from doing that. You can actually get this hot glue, is what it looks like, out of this screw and then make your adjustments if you want to increase or decrease the pressure of the tank before it shuts off. So there's a spring inside here. Once the pressure in the tank builds up enough, it pushes the spring up, flips a switch in the actual relay, and turns power off to the electric motor, which prevents the tank from getting too much pressure. If you have too much pressure in your tank, they can explode, which obviously we don't want an exploding air tank. It would most likely kill me and destroy my garage. So, the point is, don't adjust this valve, don't adjust this screw. But if you did want to adjust the screw, <laughs> 
you just turn it, and it's actually an arrow for minus and plus. So you turn it clockwise to increase the pressure, counterclockwise to decrease the pressure. I'm one of these guys who don't really listen to safety protocols and standards when it comes to, to uh, things that I understand, I guess. So that's the deal. So what's gonna happen is the tank's gonna come up to a certain pressure, most likely around 135 to 155. I think this tank's rated to one, 155. So it's probably going to come all the way up to 155 and stop. But if it doesn't, if it comes up less, I can make the adjustment, turn the screw so that it can come up to 155 because we know it's capable of coming up to 155 according to this paperwork. Now, what can happen over time is the spring can start wearing out. So it will, what would end up happening is it would shut off earlier and earlier and earlier. And so that's why we want to be able to have exposure to the screw in order to adjust the prank. The prank? We don't want to adjust the prank. Oh, it would be a prank. This is kind of a prank, actually, if you think about it. They give you the adjustment, but then put hot glue in it to prevent you from making the adjustment. Just silliness, let me tell you. They really wanted to prevent you from making the adjustment. They just sand off, grind off the screw and put a cap on it. I went ahead and connected the plug already off camera because it was just really kind of boring. And I wanted to let you know uh, what I'm doing here. I'm going to be using something I shouldn't be using and I recommend you don't use a hobby knife or a razor knife or an exacto knife, whatever you want to call it. Don't do what I'm about to do. I highly recommend against it. Already cut myself pretty deeply because I was doing something stupid. You know how your mother would always tell you with, when you have a knife and you're holding an object, you cut away from yourself? I, I was actually thinking of the moment that my mother taught me that when I was a kid and I blatantly decided, you know what? That's just too difficult. I have much more control if I cut toward myself. Well, then the razor blade slipped and went right into my finger and blood was going everywhere. It was absolutely disgusting. So let me just recommend, one, don't use a razor blade to strip your wires. If you do use a razor blade to strip your wires, <laughs> Run the blade away from you. And black wire tightened down. Now the white wire. Right, now all that's left is the grounding wire. Again, it's 10 gauge. When you're stripping the wires, sometimes if I just pull right now, the insulation is still not cut 360 degrees. It's cut most of the way. So what you can do is you loosen it up a little bit, and you rotate, and then you squeeze again, and you loosen up a little bit, and then you just kind of rotate around. If you had more room, you'd rotate this 360 degrees to make sure it's all cut, and then you just apply pressure here lift up. Alright. If you don't know how to do that, then you definitely shouldn't be doing this. But, it's all entertainment anyway, right? You guys are bored, don't have anything better to do in your lives than to watch me drop things. I'm going to wrap it clockwise. We wrap Teflon tape counterclockwise as you're looking at it like this. And what happens, I'm going to screw it this direction, it's going to want to unwrap. See right there how it's already starting to unwrap just by twisting it a little bit. That'll unwrap the whole thing. So, when you're applying Teflon tape to anything, you're going to look at it, and as the clock rotates, that's how you want to wrap it. You don't need a lot, you don't want a lot, in fact. If you have a lot, what's going to happen is the Teflon tape will actually not help with the seal, but will prevent a good seal. And the reason being because it'll be globbed up in an area. So that's one wrap. I'm going to come down a little bit to finish the second wrap. And to know where you're at, if you leave a little bit up at the top, just hanging off the edge, then you know where the top is, so you know how many rotations you've done. And again, we're going to use this TFE paste. Put way too much on there last time. So check this. 
Now, something else to know. When you're using Teflon tape, I see a lot of people that will put the tape right on the edge and then it folds over and enters inside, inside the pipe. You, you don't want that. You don't want the Teflon tape above the fitting. You want it just at the edge like this one is. I think I'm protected. What do you think? Okay, maybe not for electricity, but you never know.